Hey everyone, it's Bob from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Matt, how's it going? Matt and I are here. We got your top five Friday ski industry news for Friday, July 14th. Uh, been kind of a long week here in Vermont. Um, we've kind of been put up against it with the floods and had another round of pretty severe storms run through last night. Uh, Jeff's still in Canada this week. Matt made a heroic effort to get back up here for top five Fridays. So brighter days ahead, Matt. Absolutely. It's certainly, <laughs> certainly been a long week for a lot of us here in Vermont. And it's supposed to rain all week this week or next week. Wonderful. Yep. <laughs> keeps getting better um, so we got a couple of uh, housekeeping issues to talk about before moving into the news uh, first is the warehouse sale we have going on next weekend uh, we are going to end up donating a certain amount of the proceeds from that warehouse sale to recovery efforts recovery efforts from the flood um, so just trying to do our part and help people dry out dig out get food get water get whatever assistance they need uh, definitely, you know, a community effort to rebuild after something like this. Uh, next, we posted our e-bike review. Matt and I got to spend last Thursday on the Specialized Turbo Levo Comp Alloy and loved every second of it. Did the appropriate review where I think we were both pretty excited about that bike. So Totally. Definitely check that out. And then thirdly, Jeff has been out west on the next year's Fisher Nightstick, that twin tip ski uh, that he posted a couple of YouTube videos, a couple of shorts and uh, social media posts on that. So look forward to getting his impressions and thoughts when he gets back next week. Um, but with that, we can move forward with the news here. Uh, Michaela Schifrin, normally in the news for winning races, uh, has won her first ESPY award. So... Uh, this is an article from usskiandsnowboard.org. Uh, obviously, you can get it on ESPN.com as well. But uh, after multiple nominations, this was Michaela's first SB win. Uh, she won the award for Best Athlete in Women's Sports. Uh, she's pretty much broken every ski racing record known on the planet. So uh, well-deserved. And then in her speech, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, noted that her aim is not to break records, but to inspire uh, future generations and future athletes uh, to do their best. So uh, I think that the, the records will come if you're inspired enough. So pretty Absolutely. cool. Pretty cool to see her get that, that nod. I'm surprised that that's her first one. She's such an incredible athlete and with so totally. many nominations. Yeah. It's, but it's coming at a good time. Like how many Olympic gold medals and World Cup? things do you have to win yeah. apparently 85 or whatever <laughs> yeah. whatever her record was uh, that's the number it takes to win an SB in the sport of ski racing uh, but congratulations to Michaela and probably I don't think she's done breaking record she's not done so no pretty cool stuff uh, second one uh, no slight to you Matt I wish Jeff was here uh, Utah Department of Transportation approves the gondola plan that thing is moving forward for Little Cottonwood Canyon. Uh, this is from an article from Salt Lake Tribune. Basically, when the board approved the, or when the Utah Department of Transportation approved the Wasatch's plan, that was it. It's moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, the Wasatch Development Program put their plan in place. They did a good job. Department of Transportation has no choice but to move it forward. So... Uh, initially, what do you, what's your guess? 50-50, what's your odds? That it actually happens? That you'll see a gondola going up that canyon in your lifetime. 65-35. That, that, that it will happen. That it will happen? Okay, yeah. so you're leaning towards it happening. I don't agree with it, but <laughs> I think that it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and it's funny that this is moving forward despite, like, I think general public disagreement with it. Yeah. Um, but... Basically, they got a three-phase three plan in place. This is like the actionable plan moving forward. So uh, first is this year immediately. There are going to be more buses going up the canyon. They're just kind of trying to take the, take the traffic down, do what they can to mitigate this problem. Um, you know, more buses uh, equals less traffic. And so that's kind of the first phase. 
Uh, phase two is widening the opening in, Wa in Wasatch Boulevard. Uh, I don't know if you've been up that canyon, but it's, yep. you know, that kind of bottlenecks to the narrower road. Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking to put some more, some more width there to allow more cars and traffic through. Uh, expansion of trailhead parking and the installation of new snow sheds for avalanche mitigation. So there's a couple of things they're doing to just kind of increase the flow and have it not be so narrow. Yep. And then phase three, Matt, gondola. Uh, cost and time are the issues that I foresee having the, the most impact here. Um, any guesses as to a cost? I don't think you've seen this number. I haven't. Okay, give me a guess. Two billion. You're high, 728 okay. million. Okay. Uh, and how about the timing? If they started today, really in earnest, when do you think it would get done? Four years. 2043. Whoa. So you're low on that one. Whoa. <laughs> so I think between zoning, environmental stuff, planning, it's, you know. That, that makes sense. Sure. I think if they put a shovel in the ground today, it would take them four years to get them going. But, yeah. Uh, as, it, as it stands, they're looking at a good 20 years from now and three quarters of a billion dollars to get this thing up and running. So quite a project does that change your initial 65 35 split no you're sticking to it no i mean you know ski tourism in in utah is so it's such a big part of their yeah. economy that this would inevitably drive it and it would get paid for yeah it would get paid for and enough people will want it to happen that it will happen i mean there's three million people that live like in the city and then there's the tourists that come like it's a crazy influx yep. it's of population there so uh whichever way it ends up going it's always an interesting conversation and i'm sure the next time it comes up jeff will have something to say about it uh third topic we have a closure of bluebird backcountry we've talked about this uh ski resort i guess for uh, a couple years now um, this is an article from colorado sun uh, you had never heard of this before this, which mm -hmm. kind of surprised me, but um, this backcountry area opened in 2019, winter of 2019, 2020, uh, and it was initially like really well-timed for COVID shutting down other ski resorts uh, and just the explosion of backcountry skiing and touring. Uh, so basically this Bluebird backcountry is a hiking only ski area where the only there's minimal amenities and then there's avalanche mitigation. So there's a ski patrol and they control avalanches and stuff like that. But basically they have designated routes going up a mountain and then you ski your way down. So you'd think it's kind of low overhead cost. There's not like yeah. lodges and ski lifts and stuff like that, but uh, they ran out of money. You know, it was mainly an investor and Kickstarter foundation to start um, and there just didn't, there just wasn't enough income to turn a profit or to make this thing viable. Uh, they were charging $50 a ticket and over three years they had 19,000 guests, which when, uh, Matt, our article writer put that in there, he included that he thought that was a lot. And my initial thought was that's not nearly enough. No, not even close. Um, so 19,000 guests at 50 bucks a pop is less than a million dollars. So... That's rough. I love the concept, though. I think I the, concept the concept is good. I think there's something there. Um, whether they need to charge more for it or put it in a closer spot, like this is remote, yeah. three hours from Denver, uh, and there's just not enough amenities or lodging to, to satisfy the needs of like an influx of, of skiers. Yeah, I would imagine something that could possibly help is just placing huts in different yep. areas. And then having people take their own, you know, take their own gear up, and then the resort would bring up food for them or whatever. Yeah, I think that would, you know, that would drive a little bit more sales. But still, that's tough. That's a tough model. Yeah, and I think that you know, it's it's attractive to piggyback on kind of tr trends in the industry. Yeah. So whether it's straight backcountry or like hybrid touring stuff, uh, you know, that's been really hot lately you know, 
maybe it's cooled to the point that it's not going to sustain a backcountry specific resort. Yeah. Um, maybe like a hybrid option is in play where there's a certain amount for a lift and then a certain amount for backcountry and you have more amenities, but you're still kind of keeping a separate backcountry area. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like you said, I think the idea is good. I like the concept, um, but just not enough people, and that's gonna that's gonna sink a business. Yeah. Uh, next topic here. Uh, this is kind of the bittersweet one with the Vermont floods here. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to focus on just ski areas being affected when so many other towns and cities in Vermont were greatly impacted. New York as yeah. well. Um, just a huge widespread storm uh, this past Sunday to Monday. Um, half a foot of rain fell over pretty much the whole state. And when that happens, it just overwhelms the waterways and they just they flood into the town. So, you know, locally, Waterbury just down the street, our capital city of Montpelier, the neighboring city of Barrie, really hard hit. You know, those are kind of the more... Uh, population oriented places but you know I'm, you've seen the footage everyone's I'm sure everyone's seen footage on the news by now um, just raging rivers you know burying these towns and mud messing up the water system like it's just a mess yeah um, you know from a ski area standpoint Ludlow the town uh, that sits at the base of Okima was really hard hit uh, Killington, a lot of that stuff on the access road was 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 messed up. Uh, Magic Mountain, I heard, got got some issues, but uh, for the most part, like ski areas themselves were pretty well insulated. But obviously, when it's so widespread, it impacts everything. So, mm -hmm. um, but we are including links for resources to help. Whether you have time, money, or other things you want to donate, um, we'll include those links in both the written article and in the YouTube uh, description of this video here. So, uh, you know, definitely need some help in terms of getting this place cleaned up, food, water, money, it all helps. You know, again, just a huge area, crazy stuff. Insane. Um, and like I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna be donating some proceeds of our warehouse sale to help out these efforts as well. So uh, thank you in advance for your help and just kind of a, a tough week for a lot of people in Vermont here for sure. Edits, a little bit more fun here. Uh, Momentum Camp, Session 3 in Whistler. I didn't see Jeff when I watched it. I was looking for the pink pants, yep. didn't see him. Um, but this was on newschoolers.com, just highlighting uh, Momentum Camp, se Session 3 here. Um, some great summer skiing and riding on the, on the glacier there in Whistler. Uh, saw Mac Forehand, the US Mogul team. Uh, Cole Richardson, who we talked about with our head Oblivion uh, 102, he's on that 102 out there. So sweet, cool to Didn't see skis see. that we talk about on the feet of the professional skier that we mentioned in the video. So totally, I wanted to go to Momentum so bad when I was a kid. Oh yeah, that oh, was like on God. your list. <laughs> that one in Wendell's. Yep, those those camps were always just the, yep. the jam when you were a kid. I didn't like. It took me until like later on in high school to even know that that was a thing me too like yeah. i had no idea i saw those edits like yeah. the one that you that we chose i was just like what are they doing it's july totally. we're such sheltered eastern yep. <laughs> skiers <laughs> like this this whole world of like summer skiing out there that i've never even touched yeah but yeah it was cool to see them out there uh and then second head of the week this kid benson archer nine-year-old kid riding mountain bikes in whistler uh dirt merchant the pro line I would not touch 2% of this trail. And this nine-year-old kid is bombing it with style, speed, like pedaling, like, it's crazy. Wild, I've, um, I've been to Whistler to the bike park before and I didn't hit Dirt Merchant, but I hit A-Line and they're very similar trails. And I can, it's shocking to see how well this kid rides and it's amazing to see. And yeah. I was telling you before we fired up the camera that Every time I go to the bike park, it's always the little kids that are way better than everyone else. Right. They're always the ones with zero fear and just the coolest style. And um, I don't know. I just love watching it. Love watching it from the lift. It's, it's so much fun. Well, as a father of three, it gives my nerves a great shake. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, you know, a crash at 640 in this thing that just made my heart stop. So 
Uh, I'm impressed. Um, just crazy drops in style from this kid. Uh, he's being followed by Remy Metallier, who gives great commentary on the way down, just kind of mm -hmm. cheering the kid on. And that's pretty cool to see. But just an amazing clip from a young kid who's just going huge in the bike park and kind of some techie sections too. It's not just big jumps, but there's other parts that for sure that are frightening. For sure. So that's it. That is Top 5 Fridays here for the middle of July. Uh, if you're in Vermont and you've been affected by these floods, hope you're doing well, staying safe. Um, and just, yeah, tough time, bittersweet, mm -hmm. better, you know, clearer skies ahead. Absolutely. But hopefully everyone's doing well out there. Uh, Jeff will be back next week and kind of back to hopefully more regularly scheduled programming. Um, but thank you, Matt, for driving all the way back up here and sitting in. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. And uh, have a great week out there, and we'll see you next time. Bye.